Television Geek. So intelligent, no game plays the same way twice. Intellivision. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Player One Start. Today we're going to talk about the Intellivision. The Intellivision was released in 1979 by Mattel Electronics. It was their first attempt to enter the home video game market. Development of the console started in 1977 at Mattel in Hawthorne, California, the same year as the introduction of its main competitor, the Atari 2600. Mattel decided to use a general instrument chipset. It lacked reprogrammable graphics, but Mattel worked with general instruments to make the chipsets a little bit more customizable. A team at Mattel, headed by David Chandler, began engineering the hardware as well as the hand controllers for the console. In 1978, David Rolfe developed the executive control software known as Exec, and with a group of Caltech summer students, programmed the first games. Graphics were designed by artists at Mattel, led by David James. Though not the first console to challenge Warner Communications Atari, it was the first to pose a serious threat. A series of advertisements featuring George Plipton were produced that demonstrated the superiority of the Intellivision's graphic and sounds, especially when compared to those of the Atari 2600, and they used side-by-side -side gate comparisons in their TV advertisements. Then I compared Atari football with Intellivision. Again, Intellivision played more like the real game. In my opinion, if you try them both, there's only one conclusion you can come to. Intellivision from Mattel Electronics. When the Intellivision launched in 1979, it originally sold for $299 in the U.S. and came with a packing game, Las Vegas Poker and Blackjack, and it had 10 other games available for purchase at launch. Okay, so now that we've had a look at some of the history, let's take a look at the Intellivision itself. The first thing I noticed when looking at the Mattel Intellivision is the wood grain that I believe was standard to be on all electronics in the late 1970s along with the gold-plated inlay on the top, with the words Intelligent Television also stamped on the side. The two controllers are embedded into the consoles, so it's nice that it does come with them, but there's no way to swap them out for any other type of controller. The controllers themselves um, actually come right out of the top, and they have a number pad on there which has 10 buttons, and they also have a disc which is used for the directional pad. There are also fire buttons on each side of the controller. The Intellivision also comes with its own built-in power adapter and the RF out signal, as most TVs of the 1970s did not have a composite input yet. I got this console at another thrift store recently, so I decided to take it apart and do some cleaning. This is my first time trying to take apart an Intellivision, so I'm not really sure what to expect. I ran into a couple of issues, such as uh, some of the screws were brittle and actually just snapped off, but it didn't matter because the case slid off anyway. When I got to this step, I wasn't quite sure how to get this shield off at first because everything else had a screw in there, but uh, it looked like this metal shield was actually soldered on to the board directly. So this is where I kind of hit a roadblock. Now unfortunately, that is as far as I got with disassembling the console. With my limited knowledge and the fact that I don't own a soldering iron, I wasn't able to take off that metal shield that was keeping me from seeing the rest of the logic board. And because this console's already working, it wasn't completely necessary to take it all the way apart. Now that said, I tried to find some images of the logic board on Google Images and some other retro gaming websites, and I came up dry, mainly because I'm not sure if I can pinpoint which one is exactly the board that I have, 
because there were several different variations of the Intellivision. So you can go out there and look on your own, and I have some examples here. I can't be absolutely sure that this will match the console that I have. So the Intellivision uses a custom CPU clocked at 1.78 megahertz and has about one and a half kilobytes of RAM or memory that is divided between the system and the graphics memory. It has about seven kilobytes of ROM which stores the exec software and it has a graphics chip called the Standard Television Interface Chip or STIC for short. And that operates at 3.57-ish megahertz. Now the graphics of the Intellivision are a bit difficult to explain, but here are some of the basic things that you need to know about the graphics on the Intellivision. The graphics chip can generate a 20 by 12 tiled play field. Now tiles are about eight by eight pixels in size, and that gives a resolution of the Intellivision a total of 159 by 96. There is a 16 color palette that can display two colors per tile, but there are different graphics modes that you can use in order to tweak the available colors per tile. The graphics chip can also handle eight sprites that could be stretched, enlarged, and mirrored. And they could even be put in front of or behind the background tiles. The Intellivision came with a three channel sound chip uh, that also was capable of having one noise generator. And this allowed the Intellivision to have far superior sound than the two voice operating system of the Atari 2600. The Intellivision also had a sound expansion module that was capable of producing synthesized speech. This was rarely used, but here's a prominent example. Mattel Electronics presents Alright, so we've had a look at the technical specs of the Intellivision. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few of the games. First, let's try Burger Time. Here's a game called Tron Deadly Discs. This is a pretty faithful adaptation of the movie where you get the frisbee they throw at the other person and when you hit them they get destroyed. Alright, so this is called Bomb Squad. And I'm just going to go ahead and pick the default two levels here. Okay, so I'm giving a screen that is very confusing. Um, I'm not sure exactly what I'm supposed to do. So, after a while of trying to figure this out, I actually went online and found out that I'm missing a controller overlay for this game that would actually help on what all the number pad buttons do. So I looked at this picture as a reference. Even still, this game wasn't making a lot of sense to me. I still couldn't figure out exactly what to do. And I did a little bit more research and found out that this is one of the IntelliVoice cartridges. And since I'm missing the sound expansion module, I'm not going to be able to play this game. So, unfortunately, I couldn't show you much more of this. Okay, this is a game called Space Hawk. And it may seem a little confusing at first, but it's actually kind of fun. You get to float around in space, and you're shooting some sort of green blob projectile towards anything that's around you, and just try to survive until you reach a high score.
So the Intellivision was really successful from its launch in 1979 till about 1983. And that was the same for a lot of other consoles out there at the time, including the Atari and the ColecoVision. Because in 1983, the video game market in North America came to a screeching halt and actually crashed to where they were selling a whole bunch of video games to where people didn't think the market would survive past 1983. So in 1984, Mattel sold the Intellivision business to a former Mattel Electronics executive and some investors that would eventually become the INTV Corporation. Intellivision games uh, made a comeback in the mid 90s when two former Intellivision programmers at Mattel Electronics obtained the exclusive rights to the Intellivision and their game library in 1997. That year, they formed Intellivision Productions and they made the Intellivision for PC Volume 1 available as a free download. Intellivision Productions uh, later released Intellivision Lives and Intellivision Rocks on compact disc in 1998 and in 2001 respectively. These CD compilations play the original game code through emulators for MS-DOS, Windows, and Macintosh computers. In 2014, they released the Intellivision Flashback game console, which included the original style controllers with 60 emulated games and a few of the controller overlays. So what are my thoughts on the Intellivision? Well, the Intellivision really shines with its graphics um, and how it recreates sports games. In fact, the Intellivision is widely still remembered for its sports titles, especially when compared to the Atari 2600 or ColecoVision or other consoles of the era. One thing I kept thinking of when I was playing this console was I was yearning to be playing these games with the Atari's joystick rather than the controllers on the Intellivision. So when you look at these controllers, it's actually a number pad and it has like a phone cord that stretches out the back if only to kind of make that allusion to a telephone even greater. And there are a couple of buttons on the side you can use to fire, and that's usually the only buttons you'll use unless it requires you to use the number pad. But the most frustrating thing about the controller is the disc. Instead of using a D-pad, which really hadn't been invented yet, it was actually invented for the Nintendo's Game & Watch. But when the Intellivision came out in 79, there was no way for them to know what to use. So this disc actually acts as the D-pad or your directional pad. So you can go up, down, left, and right, but it's very difficult to control. Your finger sometimes slips on the disc, or sometimes it's hard for you to know unless you're looking at the controller if you're actually pressing up or down because there's no in-between uh, directions in there. So would I recommend this console to someone today? Well, I would say probably not. Now let me explain why. I have a console here. This is a Intellivision micro console that came out around 2003 and it is actually produced by the Intellivision Productions that and fully licensed by them and this is actually a great console. I got this at Goodwill for about a dollar and if you take a look at it it has games like uh, some of the sports games like baseball and football and it even has other popular games like Astro Smash and Snafu, Space Armada so it actually has some of the popular games on here. I actually enjoyed playing those games on here rather than the actual Intellivision, and that's because it's an actual controller. It uses a directional pad. It has a start and select button on here, and your two fire buttons are on here. So it's almost like when they made this console, they're like, let's fix the problems with the Intellivision. Now, you might ask, why didn't they put more games on here? Well, the reason why they couldn't put a lot of the games on here is because a lot of the games actually acquired the number pad. Those extra buttons were actually used to select missiles, fire in different directions, you know, what have you in other games. So even though this console is great, they couldn't play all the Intellivision games on it. So that being said, I'm not saying that the games are bad. What I'm saying is I enjoy them less because of the controller design than I probably would have had I been able to choose what my controller design would have been. Instead of buying the actual console, you can actually find a copy of Intellivision Lives or the other compilations that came out uh, for the PlayStation 2, the GameCube, the Xbox for pretty cheap. And with things like backwards compatibility, I mean, you can pretty much choose a controller you're used to. Like, I'm personally used to the PlayStation controllers, so I can play the games from that compilation using a PlayStation controller, and I enjoyed them a lot more than playing the actual console. If you actually have to have the original console or you want to be able to play more games that required the pad, instead of buying an original console and buying all the games separately, 
go ahead and buy the um, edition that came out in 2014, which has the original controllers that are designed a little bit differently, and it has 60 games built in, and it's definitely going to be cheaper than trying to track down a television, making sure it works, and doing all that stuff, so I would actually recommend that. So that about wraps it up for this video. Stay tuned because this is actually video two in a three-part series. I first took a look at the Atari video computer system slash 2600, and now that I've looked at the Intellivision, I'm gonna have the two square off and um, we're gonna see which one I think is better. So remember, if you like what you see, please hit the like and subscribe button. Please share with a friend. You can contact me on Twitter or Facebook. Otherwise, I'll see you next time and thanks for watching.